Hi everybody and welcome back to the Payless Movement YouTube channel. I'm Tom Solid and today I'm really excited because I want to share with you some snippets full of value out of the interview that I had with Leila Pomper from Process Driven. She's the expert when it comes to ClickUp and processes and SOPs. And I'm so happy to have her also as our partner expert inside the Payless Movement membership, where she shared a free course with us about how to get started with ClickUp. And as usual, this video contains the highlights out of the interview, so it makes it easy to consume on YouTube. But if you want to listen to the full interview for free, you can go over to the Payless Movement podcast and listen it there. Or if you want to watch the extended version of the interview, which also includes the Q&A from my members, then just go into the Payless Movement community. It is available there. Is there a difference? <laughs> There technically is. I don't feel like it's meaningful enough for most people to need to worry about it. A lot of the time we'll use those words interchangeably, even though system tends to be slightly bigger picture and process is a little bit more zoomed in. I think for the purposes of our conversation, thinking about how you do things and doing them intentionally, we can group that into that category. Yeah, and you already mentioned it, Asana. And uh, yeah. just lately, I was thinking about, should I go back to Asana? I mean, I was working eight years in big company, implemented Asana for many teams mm -hmm. already, cross department wise. So I'm a certified pro when it comes to Asana. I have the certification, mm -hmm. but I don't call myself Asana consultant or anything. I, I would never offer my service to implement yeah. Asana. Mm -hmm. I will stick to this. We will pick the tool that works for your business the best, and it could be anything. But sticking to Asana right now, and why I thought about switching from ClickUp back to Asana is really simplification. Yeah, so I used Asana before ClickUp as well, and I've done Asana setups because actually prior to this, I was doing similarly the best tech stack for you kind of approach um, because it made more sense for the process perspective. And I've used all the competitors as ClickUp. I specialize reluctantly because I do know there's value in using many tools. The reason I specialize is because to me, ClickUp is complicated. It's buggy lately. There are, I could more than almost anyone I would bet, I can speak to all of the reasons why ClickUp is terrible because I'm in there, I'm zoomed in and focused in on just that tool. But the reason I'm still with it and I stick with it and I still recommend it is because for all that you can do in it, it's worth the trade-off. Not to go back to that, but if you were to go back to Asana, you already mentioned, you'd be looking at kind of separating the systems out. So yeah. for me, I'd rather have a slightly more powerful system that can do both things and disable as many features, as many hierarchy levels, as many lists as I can, and avoid having to have that second login or second tool I have to teach somebody. <laughs> That's kind of where it came down to me. for me. Mm -hmm. I picture a team of five or 10 having to teach them two different tool interfaces. ClickUp is hard enough, or even Asana could be hard for somebody, but then to also teach them Notion, whether it's view only or the actual editing access, which they would need to really own a process, to me, the trade-off just isn't worth it. But I do think if you are solo, if you are, you know, keeping things very simple, switching to a simpler tool, Todoist is very popular as a as the yeah. step down of simplicity. That's an amazing tool. And it's so much more polished than ClickUp is. But I want to stick to the teams and what you just mentioned with uh, the trade-offs. So yeah. I think it becomes even more obvious the bigger the team gets or the company gets, what tools you use. So we come to the my beloved single source of truth. And you mentioned I have to teach people a second tool. Notion is a very popular thing and many are using it in their personal lives. So it might be easy in my team, for example, everybody's using new Notion, so it's not that complicated. But as I just said, the bigger the team gets, it's more unlikely that everybody uses Notion already and then the problems start and, you know, that could anytime join another team member who doesn't know Notion. And then we need to have new SOPs, new work instructions and all this in place in order to train them. Yeah, absolutely. And especially yeah. with Notion, because it's so popular in the personal use case, as I'm using it, I use Notion for my personal wiki, second brain style, oh. and then I use ClickUp for work stuff. And that separation works well for me. But the things that people do when they're building a Notion for personal use, There's some really bad habits around building Notion. I mean, the more I, I watch videos on YouTube and I'm watching the people creating the tutorials and I'm like, that is a terrible structure. I picture a lot of the individual users who, you know, know Notion and then they come into a collaborative workspace where you have to kind of 
build it in a way that's consistent, there's and still simple. a curve. And simple, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, There's I absolutely that. agree. You can go very wild inside Notion, and I'd fall into this trap myself so often. And I'm again just for the whole website, for the whole membership, everything. I'm uh, applying the Kiss principle. I keep it simple, stupid, and minimalizing stuff and deleting things that I just think it's even two percent of the whole business that I'm using this thing. So just get rid of it, and mm -hmm. it frees up so much breathing space this way and it's the notion is really the worst when it comes to this i keep adding a new table there and connecting mm -hmm. the tables there and yeah i'm still working on this online course for the notion how to connect these databases and i mm -hmm. still think it's very powerful once you set this up but what i'm struggling with is combining it with the personal notes and the, the business notes and there you start separating things again and yeah it's not as easy so but get, getting back to ClickUp, so this means you really have everything inside ClickUp. So all your work instructions and all this. How do you manage your docs in there if somebody wants to find something? I don't. <laughs> you so you I rely actually, on search. Uh, no, I don't do that either. Talk about <laughs> oh. talk about things that need a little TLC. No, in ClickUp, I actually have abandoned docs altogether and moved entirely to task based. So treating tasks as records and rather than a doc page it is a task task uh -huh. with quotes and uh -huh. i've completely switched it's replicating a lot of what you'd have in a notion database but with less customization because they're still locked in as tasks uh -huh. and that is how all of our reference links all of our work instructions everything that's data is used like that where a task equals a piece of data so you're not using docs at all that's the secret <laughs> That's the secret. <laughs> oh my God. Look at you, ClickUp. Maybe you just get rid of docs and pick up what Layla is doing there with her task. Well, but because I had a similar thought already. We have the databases there and why don't just use it as a similar way as a notion. So glad to hear that you're using it. But it seems so you are referencing to these tasks inside your other tasks then? Is that a way you do it? Okay. I am, yep, I'm treating them exactly like a document. I'm just leaning into See, where yeah, ClickUp says yeah, the roadmap right. is heading of having a tasks as item types. So you can have different types of data that's on the roadmap last I heard. You might have a better sense than I do, but that's kind of the move. It's just the so, task isn't a task. Yeah, so they just get rid of the status then. Basically, or assignee due date, making those fields yeah. optional, just like Notion, where you're starting with a blank slate, yeah. with just a record name. But this was the same thing in Asana. What I never liked is when they introduce Asana to you and they talk about SOPs and templates and all this, they just create tasks for this and it never clicked for me. So I, th there I thought, okay, there, I have a task to, to take off and it just, that it breaks. <laughs> it's not a dog. I don't want to tick off my dog. Uh, a mm -hmm. dog. Not my dog <laughs> or my cat. A dog. The, All right. The so, workaround. Yeah, is, yeah. I was just going to say the workaround for that is actually eliminating the status option for members. So you can actually give someone edit only access. Don't assign the SOP to them. So they have no ability to change the status of it. So from everyone else except for me, the creator, it does oh. appear almost like a locked task. When I'm using it, I do see the statuses, which for us are need to create SAP and create it or something like that. And I can use automations to keep that locked in a certain way, but it's surprising how well it does work. <laughs> but that's a good solution actually. But it's still sad that we need these workarounds where it is yep. so obvious how it should be structured. So, and the, the other thing that I just came up here with your last answer. So you are really using ClickUp for communication then. You don't communicate with your team via Slack. So you're using no. the chat functionality inside ClickUp. So you set up chats in there. Okay. Yeah. So the things that I worry about is that if I would do this, that I don't get connected so easily and quickly with my team members mm -hmm. than with ClickUp again, because so many using Slack and they're inside Slack anyway, and they mm -hmm. see a message came up and, and go in there. Whereas in ClickUp, I don't know, is it 
pinging on the app on your iPhone or anything like that, or you have a convention that you don't, you know, you don't care about any of this uh, anyway. Once it's working time, you go into ClickUp and you work, and then you go out of ClickUp and you're not reachable. I think we're a little weird in this regard. So from the get go, we've been fully remote, fully flex time. So even it, when it was just two of us, you know, it was work whatever hours, I don't care. And we've stuck to that. So yeah, this is, seems to be strange to a lot of other people. So we must be doing something. Oh, it's, the same, it's the same thing, you know, I don't care. As long as things get done and that, yeah. that's the thing. But this makes it even more, I'm more, even more interested now how you handle this with the ClickUp setup there. I mean, it's amazing when I say it hasn't really been an issue. So when it comes to ongoing tasks, we'll comment in the task and every single day, whenever someone's logging in, some people log in twice a day, some people are logging in for one long work day, everyone's got their own schedule. When they log in, you clear out your notifications. Before you log out, you check your notifications. It's always the place to check for an emergency. So we are basically training people to use ClickUp like Slack in the sense that you want to be you know, checking in on that if you're in a mode to respond to work. But I actually enjoy the fact that notifications are a little bit more to the side. I don't want people constantly distracted because we're in a business where there's most businesses, there aren't emergencies. Yeah. Yeah. In our business, I can count on one hand how many actual emergencies there have been for business, you know, operations. And we're just not in a situation where we've had many, you know, time sensitive things. I think one time I can think of where I had to, you know, just, I just called someone on the phone and said, oh my God, there's something really wrong. But other than that, the combination of using the uh, click up comments, click up chat views, and just a meeting cadence of once a week or so, like we're able to cover everything that we need to. And I don't think there's been too much slipping through the cracks. And if there is, we just, you know, post another comment saying, hey, what happened with this? And I'm surprised how much of a non-issue it is, honestly. I love that. I love that because it ticks so many boxes that I was recommending for many businesses already. Uh, you know, you're sitting in a meeting, don't take your notes, everybody on your notebook, write it directly into your task manager as a comment. So everybody is aligned there, what was discussed and all this. All right. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did talking to Leila. And as I mentioned, if you want to listen to the full version, you can go to the podcast or if you want to watch the extended version, just go to the Payless Movement membership. If you don't want to become a member, it's okay. No hard feelings, but stay with me on YouTube. Subscribe to this channel, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and I'll catch you up next time.